Welcome aboard, it's Captain G with another update of Historical Board Gaming's Operation Barbarossa. Axis, turn seven. This is the second half of the May, June, 1942 turn. So we'll start in the north and see what Flak 88 uh, has done to our heroes of the Soviet Union. So in the Leningrad theater, uh, our delaying action continues uh, well to hold, although our strength continues to ebb. Um, more artillery barrages. Because the Soviets have the initiative right now, when the Axis turn happens, he has to conduct attacks by Germany and the Axis miners separately. And I'll, that'll come into impact um, more in the South later. So he's doing different barrages anyway. So this isn't uh, as much an issue. But if he were to try to storm Leningrad, these Finnish troops would either have to attack on their own, be repelled, or the German armor come in from these two groups without those Finnish troops. So it would have to be two separate uh, and distinct attacks if he does not have the initiative. So that's in the north. The only other thing that happened in the north is his fighter air wing shifted down to Kiev. Down here in the south, sadly, Fortress Odessa has fallen, as, as we predicted. It was uh, held on almost as long as Leningrad as far as being trapped with only access by water. Um, so that has fallen. The counterattack that um, the Soviets did last turn to free these guys in Dieppe, the breakout fight, uh, that has now been squashed. So I lost that entire task force um, to the 9th Army, and he has a stack of, what is that, 8-9 armor, six artillery, and only four infantry. Obviously, he took the, the brunt of his um, casualties there. And all German, all German. Uh, because I think, as I pointed out at the end of the recap, the supplies here, one, two, were able to allow both these uh, units to conduct attacks. So because he had to break out Axis, minor from German, he pivoted the armor strength down, combined with everything that was here that was German, not the Italian artillery, right? But that was still enough to take this. He walked into um, Eastern Donets and Eastern um, Kharkov. So he captured a number of victory points this turn as well in the south. So he had a very successful turn, but the big, big damage he did was crossing this river. So the Axis Minor powers primarily Hungarian and Italian, and the command keeps shifting. So now it's the Italian General Messe. Um, they took this territory, captured some supplies and, and trucks and trains as and then the bulk of the 6th Panzer crossed the river. Um, I didn't have, I, I had not destroyed these bridges. So the difference from a combat move when you're attacking someone, a destroyed bridge or a bridge in place makes no difference to the combat battle. You still suffer the river penalty because of the choke points and the uh, restrictions in crossing the river. But it significantly impacts what you can do in non-combat. Had I destroyed these rivers, the bridges on these rivers, then he would not have been able to move anything in non-combat, either out or in. And uh, with this gap, he was able to bring trucks with supplies down here and here as well and get out his uh, booty, his captured um logistics supplies. So he took out a number of my trains. Um, he captured a number of my trucks. Those are now assets instead of working for me 
worse than being destroyed. They're working against me. And he has now, uh, and I'll come back to that theater, but I just want to state the logistics. He now has four trains down here in the reinforcement zone. He has one in Leningrad. He has two right here. So he has a plethora, El Guapo, a plethora of trains. Um, and with supplies and two army groups across the river, good weather, he can move to and be on the outskirts of Baku uh, at the end of next turn. And there's nothing down here besides one armor, one truck, and a couple supplies to stop him. So I'm going to have to pivot from Stalingrad these forces, I've got my guards tanks that were supposed to shore up the infantry and the artillery that were already down here with some hitters, but now they've been wiped out and the Soviets are in a bind. Now, if he had less logistics, that would constrain him. Again, the bridges are key. So even if I destroy them now, it'll take a while for him to consume the supplies he has and it's not going to take him that long to get down south, depending on the weather. If he's, uh, if it's muddy and he can only move one zone per turn, then it's longer, obviously, than if he can move two. However, when he rolled weather and initiative, the Soviets won the initiative again for turn eight, and the weather was sunny, so that bodes well for the Germans. So. July and uh, August of 1942 is coming up next. It will be the Soviet turn to try to counter uh, the massive strategic thrust that the Soviets or that the Axis did in the South and uh, hope for mud in the fall to slow him down while the Soviets who are starting to produce more than the Germans uh, can take that excess material and shift it down south as quickly as possible. So on behalf of my partner, Flak88, this is Captain G, over and out.